everybody, this is Tiana Sermons reporting for Kids First. And today, my special guest is a director and a producer. She has founded her own production company called Shoes in the Bed. And today, we are here to talk about her newest documentary called Mr. Soul, which is about the life of Ellis Hazlett, who was the first, one of the first Black TV hosts, which I was surprised to know that he actually came out before Oprah. And so we just get to learn a little bit about his life on set and off set. So please welcome the amazing director of this film, Melissa Hazlett. Hi, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me, Tiana. This is so exciting. Yes, same here. Thank you so much for letting me get to interview you. It truly is an honor. Well, I'm delighted. I'm so excited about what you're doing and inspired by you, always looking to the next generation to lead us. So this is really great. Thank you so much. I got a chance to watch the film. You know, it's really great. It's really inspiring and very motivational. So why did you decide to tell Mr. Ellis Hazlip's story? I thought it would be a really important story to tell. First of all, Ellis Hazlip was a really unique individual. And being that he was the first African-American to have a late night television show in 1968, which was about culture and news and the arts, black arts, it was really important to me to tell this story. You know, you hear about unsung heroes and mm -hmm. people whose contributions to culture are so significant, but you don't always hear about them. Yeah. And I realized this is a really important story to tell. Also, I should uh, admit to you that he is my uncle. So I grew up really admiring him and for him to be my mentor. So part of it is a legacy, a family legacy that I wanted to keep as well. Yeah, that's really cool that he's actually your uncle. And I feel like aside from that, like I didn't even know that. And so it's just really surprising getting to learn a little bit more about his life. You know, I like to say that it's the greatest show you've never heard of because so many people and young folks such as yourself who really start thinking about TV when it was popular, things like the Oprah Winfrey show, or maybe your mom, you know, used to watch Soul Train when she was little and there were very few opportunities to see people of color on television. We're not used to that now. So yeah. we, we have everything at our disposal now. We, ha we can be on our phones, our tablets, we can be on the computer, we can Skype and we can, you know, Zoom and all these really wonderful platforms and technologies. But there was a time when it was very simple and there were just three television uh, stations. PBS was a fourth station that was public media. So you basically had four options, you know, ABC, CBS, NBC, the three stations. And nobody really, because this was sort of pre and post civil rights, nobody was really considering people of color to have a culture that deserved to be on television. And we all knew that there was always this opportunity to share black excellence, but nobody had shared it on television. So I thought it would be really important, especially now, to tell that story. Yeah, it's really great. I love getting to hear about new people that a lot of people don't really talk about or know about. I think that's important because we have um, so much technology at our fingertips. We can Google any name at any time, but it's also important to recognize the shoulders on which we stand. And I think that it's exciting when you see somebody like Oprah who has just an amazing history of television and creating opportunities for people, Broadway shows and theater, and now she has her own network. But you wonder, well, how did she get started? And, and who paved the way for her? And that's right. what interests me. So when you look at the log line, it says before Oprah, before Arsenio, there was Mr. Soul. And that's important to say, hey, wait a minute, where did we actually come from? Who paved the way for all this opportunity that we take for granted right now? Exactly. And that's really so inspiring. So can you describe your process for selecting the different people to interview that were actually on Soul and even the performances to include? Absolutely. That's a very good question, Tiana, because imagine that there were five years for this show and Imagine that in five years, you had 130 episodes. 
So that's a lot of artists and a lot of different things to consider. So we wanted to tell the story of Soul, and we wanted to tell the story of Ellis Hayslip, which is a, like a, a second story. And we also wanted to tell the story of what was happening in the nation. So that's three different storylines that combined together. So we had to figure out what elements would make the, that story make sense, which songs should we use, and which archival would, would help put us in that time and help us understand what 19, like what did 1968 look like on television? Right. And what did, what was happening in the country? What was happening? Were they protesting? Was, was there wonderful things happening? So we have to set the stage to take you back in time. So it's like a time capsule, but we also want to take you up to the present too. Yeah, that's just really cool and something that I really loved about this film. So as a director, what was the most significant moment during or after filming? I think it was really significant. Well, recently, this new release that we've done is very significant because we have done something completely new in terms of a model for what we call distribution or the way that you get your film out. We decided because everybody is home and we are suffering a very difficult pandemic right now. So people can't really go out and they can't go to the movie theaters, but we had a story that was uplifting and that was encouraging. And it was a really wonderful opportunity to look back at our greatness, especially as African-Americans in this country, we have contributed so much to the arts. So we decided, well, I know all the, we knew that the theaters would be closed. What if we distribute this film digitally and, provide opportunities for people to watch it virtually. And since everything we're doing is about staying safe, staying home, right. home learning, um, as you know, kids in school understand what that means, it just made sense to take this modern film that even though it was telling an older story, we wanted the film to be modern. We said, why don't we release it virtually? And we started out with three theaters and now we have over 90 virtual cinemas across the nation. That blew me away <laughs> because now we have opportunities to share it. You can watch it from home and you can be safe, but you can also be part of this new movement where you are supporting an independent theater that has its doors closed, maybe your favorite cinema or your favorite museum. You're also supporting an independent filmmaker such as myself. So it's a different way of bringing content to people. And that, that was really exciting for me. I can definitely see how that was the most significant moment for you. Yeah, because I, I thought all these years we've been working on the film, and it has been 10 years, Tiana. It took us wow. 10 years to finish, and that's exactly how old you are. <laughs> so imagine, your whole life I've been making this film. So imagine, wow. I never dreamed that I wouldn't be able to show it, or that everything would be closed, or that people would be suffering, and that it would be a difficult time. And so we thought, well... Our film is a love letter to black culture, to the black experience. And it's a, a wonderful thing for all people to enjoy. It's a story that's universal. So why don't we make an effort to bring it out to the nation? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was really exciting. Yeah, and it means a lot to me knowing that all my life, this amazing film about such an amazing person has been made all my life. That's what I love when you said you were 10. I said, I wonder if I should tell her that it took that long. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. You can definitely appreciate how long that is. Yeah, I really can. So how would you describe what Mr. Hazlip and Soul, his show, did for the African-American community? I would describe what Ellis Hazlip did with the show, Soul, for the African-American community was really groundbreaking. The idea of sharing the full complexity of black culture on television at a time when that hadn't really been possible before because there just were no black people on TV. And if they were, it was very negative stereotypes. So this notion of expanding and changing thought, you know, some revolutionaries might be in the streets, some might be protesting as we've seen recently in the news. There are other revolutionaries who can change minds. And I think Ellis Hazip was in the business of changing minds and showing people that black people are beautiful. They've always been beautiful. There is so much beauty. There is black love and black sister and brotherhood. 
black politics, black art, black creativity, but also black descent, people with different opinions, and that this is all part of the black experience. And I think he brought diversity and inclusion to television because up until that point, it really hadn't happened before on that scale. Right. So he really set the groundwork for and paved the way for many of the television hosts that we know today and this format of bringing beautiful culture to television. So you can see that Oprah is standing on his shoulders and so is Arsenio Hall as well. And so is uh, Trevor Noah from The Tonight Show. You yeah. know, it, maybe all these people that we take for granted now really got this opportunity because somebody was bold and brave enough to do that back in 1968. And I'll remind you, somebody who who unfortunately was taken from us in 1968 was Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. And so that was a very difficult time for the nation. And the fact that he could bring a television show that celebrated black culture, even in the midst of this sadness, it was really revolutionary. It was. And it really means a lot to me because I wanna be a journalist and I wanna have my own show. And knowing that he's someone who's really great and paved the way for me to even be able to do that when I grow up, I really love that. Oh, that's so great because I'm telling you, his birthday was yesterday. And I think that he would be so excited to see you right now. He was always trying to create opportunities for young folks. And he reminded me of that because he took me under his wing when I was young. And he would take me around to meet all the people I would be running around, you know, on, at their feet and not realizing they were, these were famous people that I was hanging out with, but it gave me an appreciation of the possibility. And he went to uh, an historically black college university called Howard University. You may have heard of it. It's yes. in the DMV. Yeah, that's where I want to go. Oh, fantastic. So they have a really great school of journalism uh, and school of comm or communications. And I myself worked together with uh, seven young women um, who were going to be graduating. They were seniors in college, and I wanted to give them an opportunity to work with me on a professional set and understand yeah. what that future could be for them. So we've always looked for ways to engage young people because you guys are carrying the torch, you know? The technology is up to you. The future is up to you. The planet is up to you. So I really respect that and I encourage you to follow your dreams. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate that. So just for my last question, who do you hope goes out and sees this film? I hope everybody goes out and sees this film. I know that's a pretty broad spectrum, um, but it's really important for young people to see the film. It's important for everyone to realize, as I said, that this is a universal story it's about inclusion and diversity, yes, but it's also about what our hopes are and dreams are for the country to come together, especially now during this period, which is very difficult and feels like we're divided, especially because we're home uh, from the pandemic and you know there's a lot of tra trauma in the world right now. But we do know that art is healing and that art represents the future in terms of what we could do and I believe that Ellis Hayslip saw that future. And I really hope that many people will see the film and appreciate not just the beauty of black culture because Ellis Hayslip championed that, but to recognize that we need stories like this. We need our stories and we need to tell them now more than ever. Yes, I truly agree. It was so inspirational. I really loved getting to watch it. I hope all of you guys get a chance to watch it too. But thank you so much for letting me talk to you today. This was such a heartwarming and inspirational interview. Oh, thank you so much. I think I feel even more inspired by you. So we were now going to always represent the 10 years of making this film. I mean, you are the gift. You are the future. Thank you, Tiana. Yes, and thank you so much again. That is all for this amazing interview on Kids First. Again, I'm your host, Tiana Sermons. That's all for now. Bye. Thank you. Seeds keep on growing. There's nothing but evolution in my show.